Hi, I'm Dan Wright, and I'm going to be talking about the Jevons Paradox. The Jevons Paradox claims that technological advances will actually increase energy consumption, even when those are advances are in the energy efficient efficiency field. So while energy efficient technology may cause a decrease in consumption initially, in the long run, it'll actually increase total energy use. Uh, take, for example, more energy efficient cars. People concerned about, you know, gasoline prices, global warming, things like that may tend to drive hybrid or more fuel efficient cars. But one of the problems with this is that people may actually tend to drive more because they're no longer worried about, you know, fuel consumption or emissions. So they actually increase their energy use and their driving altogether. Um, another point with respect to the energy efficient vehicles is that even if everyone changed to this type of technology, with population growth in you know some amount of time, we'll eventually be back to the same energy use or actually a higher level if population continues to increase at the same rate. Another example of Jevons paradox is appliances. Um, today you can get energy star rated appliances which are more efficient than devices in the past, but people today also tend to have more appliances and use more of them. People have, you know, big toasters, a blender, a big coffee pot, several TVs in their house. And while each of these items is more energy efficient, because they're more energy efficient, they're less expensive to use and people use them more often. So why does this matter? Why is Jevons paradox important? Uh, many people believe that we have an energy crisis on our hands or will in the near future. Many economists and policymakers believe that if we just increase our energy efficiency and improve technology and invest in green jobs, we can avoid our energy problems. If everyone just drives a hybrid and gets a few solar panels put on the roof, we'll use less energy, or at least that's the popular view among a lot of environmentalists. But for the reasons I just talked about, that could actually increase our energy use. So Jevons is important because it provides an alternative and perhaps more realistic view of the world's energy consumption. Um, also, many economists and policymakers believe that in order to decrease demand for a good or service, you have to increase the price. Traditional economics says, you know, at a higher price, fewer people will be willing and able to afford a good or service. And while this may be the case with, you know, most goods and service, it isn't necessarily the case with energy. Um, people are still going to need to drive to work and heat their homes and get to school and the grocery store. And even while higher prices might uh, de decrease recreational driving initially, eventually people will get used to the prices and adjust and energy consumption levels will return to So Jevons paradox is also important because while many economists and policymakers have an it'll work itself attitude towards energy, um, claiming that the market will provide solutions, Jevons paradox says, you know, wait a minute, the market might actually make things worse and, you know, uh, some kind of tax that would just increase prices might not have a, a positive effect either. So we need to kind of look at things from a different perspective according to the, the Jevons paradox. Because the Jevons paradox relates to a lot of today's energy issues, books like this are important when trying to explain it. Some of the important concepts in the book deal with things like Jevons paradox, obviously, and the rebound effect. Uh, it also provides a history of the Jevons paradox, which was developed in William Stanley Jevons' 1865 book, The Coal Question. Perhaps the most important thing that this book does, at least in my opinion, is provide empirical evidence of the Jevons paradox. Usually it's not the idea 
that's the hardest thing to come up with. The hardest part is proving it, and this book supplies a lot of data to help support the Jevons paradox. And something that I thought was interesting specifically was that it shows that over the past 50 years, while energy intensity decreased in the United States, total consumption actually increased, which is supportive of Jevons' paradox. Another interesting thing that this book brought up was that Jevons can be related to things that don't necessarily deal with energy. For example, the book talks about um, issuing tasers to police officers since, since they exact a lower societal cost, though, officers will actually tend to use them more. And something that this also reminds me of is there's a new smartphone out that, you know, it claims to be so fast and so efficient that you'll use it less because you can get things done faster. But looking at it from a Jevons point of view, because it's faster and more efficient, you'll actually tend to use it more and spend more time on it. Some other important concepts in the book are population effects on energy consumption and peak oil, which is the rate at which oil being discovered surpasses that of oil discovery. So this book gives a good overview on the Jevons paradox, what it is, where it came from, and gives some good evidence to support it. It seems after Hearing the idea, it almost seems as though we should give up trying to innovate new technology to increase energy efficiency because it'll just increase consumption overall. But obviously that's not going to happen because this idea isn't really isn't widely accepted, nor is it necessarily the right thing to stop energy efficient technologies. But what it's really going to take to try and solve the energy problems in the future is a combination of more efficient technologies and also using energy more responsibly. You can't just assume because something's more efficient that, that you can use more of it. It really comes down to individual responsibility.